Hello guys, Sunny here with Creo and today I'm going to show you how to use the Creo Swarm software. A uh, few things to note before using the software, the software only works in the 2.4 GHz mode and the wired USB connection. And currently the software only runs in Windows OS. There's no support for Mac OS right now but that may change in the future. So for today I'm going to show you the demo in the 2.4 GHz mode but this is same for the wired mode as well. So just turn on the keyboard and it should be detected automatically. The software is actually very easy to use. There are five main tabs here. The first one is for global settings. The second one is for assigning shortcuts or macros. The third one is for lighting, uh, lighting settings. And the fourth one is also a lighting setting, but this is a reactive lighting setting. I will tell you more about it later. And the last one is for macro settings or creating custom macros. So we will start with the key assignment tab. And this is where you basically assign all the shortcuts to your keys. If you want to change the functionality of any particular key, you can do it here. There are four layers as you can see the default layer, the function one layer, the function two layer and the tab settings. These can all be utilized to create very advanced shortcuts. For example, you can assign four different functions to one single key. On the left side, you will also see the profile section where you can create custom profiles depending on your application, depending on your games. So we will start with a very basic profile here. Let's say, let's name it Rusty. And you can also export or import profiles so that you can use it on some other laptop or PC. So we will start with very basic shortcuts. Let's say I want to assign the control, the right control key to act as a sh shortcut for task manager on Windows. So to do that, you just have to select the control key and go to key combination. I will select control, shift and press escape on my keyboard. Now I just have to press on the save button and my control key now will act as a shortcut for task manager. So when I press the control key, as you can see, my task manager has started working. So I can do it again. Whenever I press the control key, my task manager will work. You can also use other functions. This is just one example. So let's try something else. Uh, let's say whenever I press the right control key, my volume goes up. So select the control key, go to multimedia and select volume plus. Now just save it. So whenever I press on the control button now, my volume will increase as you can see. So now we will move to some advanced functionality. Uh, with the Swarm, it is completely possible that you can assign four different functions to one single key. We will take the example of the P key and we will create four different shortcuts out of it. Or let's say four different functions out of it. So how this will work is whenever I press the P key, it will work normally like it will type the letter P. But if I hold the P key for some time, it will act as a play or pause button. And if I press function plus P, it will go to the next track. And if I press control, the right control plus P, it will go to the previous track. So to set up this, we need to enable tap functionality first. So to enable tap functionality, you need to go to the global settings, scroll down and you will get an option of tap. By default, it is turned off. You need to enable it. And when you enable it, this is the sensitivity window. So this is where you set how long you need to press the key before it functions to the tap uh, shortcut. So let's move back to the key assignment option. Now the tap setting works a little differently. Instead of selecting what is on the long press option, you select what is on the quick tap option. Click on tap, select the key P and assign P to it. I mean the default option. For example, if it was I, select I on this window. If it was T, select T on this window. So click on P, select the P shortcut and press save. So now whenever I press a tap on the P key, it will work normally, which is what we want, right? So for the so now for the long press shortcut, we need to go to the default option and select P, go to multimedia and select play pause and save it. You may get this error that uh, device is busy or wireless interference. You can ignore it. Just press OK and try save again. Now this functionality is different. Now the P button when you long press it will act as a play pause button. To show you an example, if I go to any song and I long press the P key, it will start playing. As you can see, the song is playing right now. Now if I play, uh, long press on the P button again, it will pause the song. So now we have assigned two function to one single key. Now what if I want the same P to work as a next and a previous track option? For that, you need to go to the function one button first. So this layer allows you to map any key with the function key, the default function key. So for this example, whenever I press function plus P, the next song will come up. So select the P key go to multimedia and select next track and save it. So now when I go back to playing some songs, I can actually change to the next track by pressing function plus P button. 
And if I want to pause it, I can just long press. Now, as I said in the beginning, you can actually assign four different functions here. So to assign the fourth option, you need to go to the function two button. But this does not work directly. You need to assign a function button for this layer. So you need to make one more function button for the keyboard. In this example, we will use the right control key as a function two button. Most probably the right control key won't be used much. So we can use this as our function two button. So select control, go to keyboard, select the function two button and press save. So you can combine any other key with this control button or this function two button. In this case, we will use the control plus P shortcut for our previous track option. So go to P, select multimedia, select previous and press save. If I go back to my tracks, I can start playing the song by long pressing P. I can change to the next track by pressing function plus P. I can go back to the previous track by pressing Ctrl plus P and I can switch to all other things or I can let's say switch between tracks without any problems and if I want to pause any song I can just long press the P key and now if I want to type something I can do it normally for example U I O P right U I O P so this is how the advanced shortcut options in the swarm works I have given you example of a very basic functionality but you can combine it to create multiple shortcuts and you have all the options available here there are mouse shortcuts multimedia macro commands so it's up to your creativity and your thought process on what kind of shortcuts you can create so now we will move to the lighting section so you get many different options here you can choose between multiple effects for example a fixed light effect or respire there are multiple options you can play around with everything for example there's a reaction option you just need to press on save so now whenever you press on any key the keys react to your press so there's also an option of self-define so for example if i want the function row to glow in let's say some kind of orange color i will actually select the orange color here first and then select the function row and press on save now as you can see the function row has a specific orange color here so another example if i want to change the color of the typing keys the main alphabet to something let's say a purple i will select purple here first and then select all the typing keys and manually select all the alphabets here and press on save so now my alphabets are glowing in this purple color you can play around with all the other settings and you can also turn off the lights completely to save battery now there's one more exciting mode here which is the reactive lighting mode so now this only works with music you need to have some sound playing in your system for this to work uh, first of all you need to manually turn it on so let's say i have turned it on here and if I place any song here now, what you will see, the keyboard reacts to the lighting effects of the keyboard. There are many different settings available here. Personally, I like the pearl option here because that looks like a very traditional equalizer option. This effect will only work if there's any music playing. If, there are, if there's nothing playing on your PC, the lighting effect will not work. Now we will move to the macro option. This is where you create custom macros, custom shortcuts for your keys, which are not available by default. So to create a new macro, you just have to click on this plus button, select new macro and name it something, let's say TRE and press OK. Now you need to start recording the macro. To record the macro, you just need to press on record, uh, press all the uh, like commands you want to have for example control s shift plus t shift plus g uh, shift plus y and let's say alt plus t and now when you press stop this whole action will be uh, assigned to this particular macro you just press on save so to assign this macro you just have to go back to the key assignment option so now let's say i want to assign this macro to the letter a i just need to go to a select macro select tre and press save this is moving through all the shortcuts that I have assigned here. So now finally, let's check out the global settings. Here you will find some specific settings for the keyboard and for Windows. So first of all, there's a language option. Then you have the startup option. So if you want the Creo Swarm software to run along with Windows, then you can just select on auto run. You can also decide how the application exits when you press the cross button. So you have the option of completely closing it or it can reside in your system tray area. You also get an advanced setting of debound setting. Now by default, this is at stage two, which is fine for both games gaming and typing. If you want to have the fastest response time, you can actually set it to stage one. There's also an option of resetting the com keyboard completely. You can also use the shortcut function plus escape for five seconds to reset the keyboard. So this was a tutorial for the Swarm software. If you have any questions, you can leave it in the comments and our team will get back to you. Thank you and have a nice day. Bye.